All right, we're gonna start with the second part of 1.3, writing expressions. I grabbed a better marker, we'll see if it makes things clearer. All right, I'm on example two. A piece of ribbon, L feet long. Okay, so we have a piece of ribbon. And we know it's L feet long. Is cut from a ribbon eight feet long. So the whole ribbon is eight feet long. Okay. Write an expression. So this is the, the ask. Write an expression for the length in feet of the remaining piece. Now here is sometimes where my students get frustrated because they're like, I can do this problem without writing expressions, and that is absolutely true. In fact, several kindergartners could do this problem. Well, maybe not, maybe first graders, but basically this is an obvious problem. What is not so obvious is the algebra piece. And so what is the remaining piece? Well, if the beginning piece is eight feet and you're, and you're cutting, right, L feet, you're trying to figure out what's left, right? What is, this is the length that you want to put as an expression. And we can tell, well, it's eight feet minus L, right? So the remaining piece you would write is eight minus L. That is the expression that describes it. So that's the first thing that they asked you. And of course, now if they tell you what L is, you'll know exactly what the remaining piece is, but you had to start with having your expression. The book tells you L is two, right? So if L is two, then the remaining piece is eight minus two or six feet. Okay, let's go to exercise three. You work with five other people at an ice cream stand. All the workers put their tips into a jar and they share the amount in the jar equally at the end of the day. Write an expression for each person's share in dollar of the tips. So you work with five other people. and you're going to share the tips in the tip jar at the end of the day. What is each person? So write an expression for each person's share. dollars of the tips. So again, they, they're not really interested in the exact amount. They're interested in an expression that tells you no matter what the, um, the total is in that jar, right? You've got that jar with all the money in it at the end of the night, your coins, your bills, whatever they may be, right? You want an expression that will always calculate it as long as this is true, you with five other people. Now I want you to look at this and tell me what you think that expression is before I write it down. In fact, I would like you to write it down on your paper without looking at the book. If you wrote down X over five, you will be like most of my students. And I probably would have done the same at your age, but that is not true. So if you wrote this down, 
look again. You work with five other people at an ice cream stand. That means how many people are there? There are six people. You with five other people equals six people. And if those six people are sharing the tips, so you've got the dollars of the tips, right? We're gonna call this A for amount. The expression is going to be A, or could have been X, doesn't matter. I shouldn't have changed that on you, divided by six. Okay, let me go to the next example. Let me turn this over so it's less marks on it. Example four. Now to do example four, you need a little reminder what a rate is. A rate is a fraction, number one. So it's something per something that compares two quantities which have different units, measured in different units. So dollars per pound, uh, let's see, uh, dollars per square foot. Um, let's see, miles per hour. Um, let's see, dollars per kilowatt hour, which is something you haven't learned yet, but essentially these are rates. And most of the time when we do rates, uh, we try to put it in the easiest possible form. So if you're going, you know, if you've gone uh, 50 miles in two hours, which I hope you didn't do because that's dreadfully slow, you're going 25 miles per hour. Because for a rate to be meaningful, you need to put it right in terms of a unit rate. So example four says if a car travels 110 miles in two hours, find the unit rate. In other words, the rate where the num there's a number one something on the bottom, a unit rate is something per one of whatever the unit is on the bottom. So if a car travels 110 miles in two hours, how far does it travel in one hour? And we know that if it travels 110 miles in two hours, it's gonna go 55 miles in one hour. So this is a, a rate. But this, because it's per one hour, is a unit rate. And again, these are all different pieces that you're going to need as we do word problems. The last is a multi-step problem. And for me to do this with you, you're gonna to have to pretend you are living in the, I'm guessing in the 90s when this book was made, because the information in here and, and at times, especially where cell phones and internet is a little dated. So in the old days, um, when you got a cell phone, you ha and actually there's probably still some plans, something like that, but you had a basic monthly charge. Um, and so in this situation, the basic monthly charge is $30. And there's a minimum 300 free minutes included. In other words, you only pay when you go to the 301 minutes or 302 minutes, right? After that, you pay a fee for each additional minute. Okay. So at one month, 
you paid, so one month, and you, you've bought this plan, you paid $3.75 for 15 extra minutes. Okay, find your total bill. Now, understand, you have to read these carefully. Find the total bill if you use 22 extra minutes. Okay, so this just followed a little detour on rates, right? So let's go back to the beginning. You have a basic monthly charge of $30. That includes 300 free minutes. One month you went over, 15 minutes over, and you found you paid 375 more than $30. So presumably $33.75. This month, you haven't gotten your bill yet, but you realize, oh, I used 22 extra minutes. I'd like to know what my bill is ahead of time. How are you gonna find out? Well, first, you need to calculate the unit rate. You'll notice at the beginning of the problem, they didn't tell you how much per minute you get charged when you get over 300 minutes. So the first thing you need to do is know what that number is. So calculate the unit rate, right, which is dollars per minute over the 300. Do you have enough information to do that? Well, yes, because you were told the first month, right, you paid $3.75, and that was for 15, right, extra minutes. And so if you work out this problem and you divide $3.75 by 15 minutes, you get the unit rate, right? You're gonna calculate that the dollars per minute extra that they charged you is 25 cents per minute more. So now you know that this month, right? You have a basic charge And you know that that's $30. And you know you've gone 22 minutes over, right? So minutes over 300 times the rate per minute. Okay, so you got $30 and you went 22 minutes, extra minutes over the 300. So it's gonna be 22 minutes. And we just calculated the unit rate is 25 cents a minute. So twenty a quarter per minute or 25 cents per minute. And I should have added my units here. And you can see that you're gonna end up with $30 plus 22 times 25 cents. And you're gonna end up with $30 plus $5 and 50 cents for a total of $35 and 50 cents. Okay, so just going through the problem again. What did we have to do? We had to write down essential information, right? Month, basic monthly charge, 300 free minutes included. You have to write that down. Partly just so that you've taken that information from that paragraph and you've got the essentials in front of you. You've noted you pay a fee for each additional minutes. You write down the clue they gave you, $3.75 for those 15 extra minutes. From that clue, you calculated that that's 25 cents per minute for each extra minute. And since you knew you'd use 22 of those extra minutes, you know that this month you're gonna pay $30 plus $5.50, which is the 22 minutes times uh, 25 cents a minute. 
And so your complete bill is going to be $35.50. Okay, well that covers uh, 1.3. And I will be looking for you to make these notes on your homework.